when laughter cures beheading. A cruel story of Muhammad re-examined. It will be shown that the strongly criticized episode of Muhammad's life, regarding the treacherous Jewish tribe the Banu Qurayza, is actually a retelling of the ancient Israelite Day of Atonement temple rituals. In the name of Allah, the Merciful, the Compassionate. After a battle, our Holy Prophet Muhammad was taking a bath. Note Muhammad is not shown. The temple interpretation of the story will be indicated by the high priest appearing at the bottom. This symbolizes the high priest being immersed in the bronze basin. Then the angel Gabriel, wearing fancy clothes, came riding up to him on a white donkey. The word donkey is wordplay for priest in Hebrew. The color white refers to the white garments of the high priest. The fancy clothes refer to his colorful outer garments. Muhammad then went with his army to the castle of the Jewish tribe. Who then insulted him? I blow my nose at you, so-called prophet, you and all your silly Arab kerniggets. Muhammad told his men to write abusive poems to the Jews. Roses are red, violets are blue, pork meat smells, and so do you. Disclaimer. This is not a translation of one of these poems, but an example of what such poems might have been like, and my entry to be the next poet laureate. And he also gave as good as he got. You are the brothers of monkeys and pigs. Solomon's Temple The high priest entered the temple to perform the usual morning service. The insults Muhammad received signify the symbolic pollution of the temple, to be cleansed in the subsequent rituals. Calling the people monkeys and pigs is related to the cherubim statues which had animal features, albeit neither monkey nor pig. However, there were too many date palms surrounding the castle to make camp, so Muhammad told the trees to leave. The palm trees going away would probably signify the temple doors being opened, because they had palm trees drawn on them.
next Gabriel cast them to strike terror into the hearts of the Jews. Again, Gabriel is signified by the same garments which were now taken off. They then set up camp near a well. The high priest was then immersed in the bronze basin, signified by the well. The siege lasted for 25 days. But why 25 days? Moses was with his Lord forty nights, and the Israelites wandered the desert for forty years. Yet according to the Bible, Solomon's temple had twelve lampstands, a set of ten ending with the special menorah lampstand, and the bronze serpent. Each lampstand had seven lamps. Making 42 lamps on one side. Hence, some old manuscripts of the Bible state they wandered 42 years instead of 40, 40 being a simplification. Additionally, the Quran says that a day in the sight of thy Lord is like a thousand years of your reckoning. This refers to the Holy of Holies. Because the high priest would only enter it on the Day of Atonement, hence a day in the sight of thy Lord. However, the Holy of Holies was a cube, in Solomon's temple a similar size to the Kaaba. Yet in the portable temple tent, tabernacle, which Moses used, it was smaller. Using the cubic measuring system, the distance from the elbow to the fingertips, we have the following dimensions. 10 cubits by 10 cubits by 10 cubits. This implies that its volume was 1000 cubic cubits, hence the symbolism of this number. This is why the Quran says that some Jews wanted to live a thousand years, because it signified entering the Holy of Holies, whether they knew its meaning or not. So instead of using 40 days again in another story, they used 25 days. 1000 divided by 40 equals 25. A man negotiated with the besieged Jews and said something wrong, so he tied himself to a tree for six days, asking Allah for forgiveness. All this could correspond to the high priest, 
who then placed his hands on the head of a bull and confessed his sins, i.e. saying something wrong. The man tying himself to a tree for six days might be linked to the tree-like fountain with six branches off from the stem, having the oxen underneath. Later on, Allah told Muhammad that the man had been forgiven. At this, Muhammad laughed, and a wife of his went to inform him. Ha -ha. Muhammad laughing is linked to the high priest saying the divine name, Jehovah, or Yahweh. According to Jewish legends, when we do hard work we say, Hiwa, here, like huffing and puffing. Huff. Puff. Huff. Puff. Hiwa. Here. Hiwa. Here. The divine name was symbolized by repeating the HH sound, in either heavy breathing, or laughing. Another story about his wife has her either out of breath, or laughing. A Jew who had supported Muhammad was bound with rotten rope. He was questioned by the guards. Halt! Who goes there? I will never behave treacherously towards Muhammad. Ah, we know you, we are glad to right your wrong. The man went away, and no one knows where he went. They later found the rotten rope used to bind him. There were two goats used, one to be sacrificed and the other to be sent away. The one to be sent away had some red wool tied on its horns. Afterwards, the high priest laid his hands on the head of the goat and confessed the sins of Israel, thereby identifying himself with it. After the main rituals, another man came and took the goat to a cliff edge. He took some of the wool from the horns and tied it to a rock. He then pushed the goat off the cliff. This is why in the story they found the rotten rope. But he was never found. When the Jews surrendered, 
Muhammad asked an allied Arab tribe to send their chief, a Muslim called Saad, to judge the Jews. The Jews were our allies, so please show leniency as before. Will you be satisfied if one of you pronounces judgment on the Jews? Yes. Because Saad was fat they put him on a donkey with a leather cushion, he had also been recently wounded. Deal kindly with our Jewish allies, because that is why Muhammad chose you. I will judge with justice. Do you agree to follow my judgment? We do. The men should be killed and the women taken as booty. His ruling is what the Bible says the Jews should do in their place, if the city will not make peace with you, then you shall besiege it and kill every man, but the women, children, and animals shall be plunder for you. You have given the judgment of Allah who is above the seven heavens. The donkey is wordplay for priest, as before. Similarly, the word fat in Hebrew has the same first consonants as the word for a type of incense. And it is now that the high priest took incense into the holy of holies. Muhammad therefore ordered that trenches be dug. And that the men be brought to be beheaded in batches, tied by their shoulders. There were 600 men beheaded in total. Trenches being dug symbolized bull's blood being sprinkled on the shovel on the floor before the ark. Next, the goat to be sacrificed was killed by having its neck cut. However, according to some traditions red wool had already been tied around its neck. This could be why the symbolism of beheading was used. Additionally, the blood of the goat was also sprinkled on the shovel before the ark.
batches of men being tied by their shoulders is probably linked to the high priest who had special stones on his shoulders. These shoulder stones can be shown to represent the two cherubim on the Ark of the Covenant. This can be seen by considering that the high priest had a golden plate engraved with the Lord, and the glory of the Lord appeared between the cherubim. Hence the symbolism of men being tied by their shoulders. Does the number of men killed, 600, have any significance? We have heard how Moses was taken out of the water by Pharaoh's daughter. However, according to Jewish legend, 600,000 baby boys were taken out along with Moses. This is the number of Israelites in the desert. That 600,000 babies came out of the water with Moses, leads us to suspect that the watery bronze basin is the source of the number 600. Its circumference was 30 cubits, although the maths would give a slightly larger figure without a little entrance. There were two rows of little oxen, with ten per cubit under its rim. This then makes two times ten times thirty, which equals six hundred oxen. Also, in Hebrew, the words for thousand and ox are consonant tally the same. This is why 600 of Pharaoh's chariots also drowned in the sea, the bronze basin too was called the sea. So 600 being beheaded is linked to the high priest who had emerged from the bronze basin. Next one of the Jewish leaders was taken. He was wearing a fancy robe. In it he had made finger-sized holes to stop anyone having it. This could relate to the high priest who, according to some traditions, now sprinkled the goat's blood before the veil. Presumably, the finger-sized holes symbolize the high priest's finger used to sprinkle the blood, the robe symbolizing the veil. 
a wife of Muhammad was talking to a captive woman. Natter natter natter. Oh dear. Natter natter natter. What a shame. Natter natter natter. Oh I know. Seeing the beheadings, she began to laugh. Then an unseen voice called her name. Nubata. Good heavens, what's the matter? I am to be killed. What for? Because of something I did. We've got one here. She's hysterical, been hearing voices, and thinks she should be killed. Shouldn't she be taken away? Cuts to the health budget mean that mental health has been slaughtered. Okay then, off with her head. The high priest then sprinkled the goat's blood on the incense altar. The lampstand menorah symbolized the glory of God, known as Shekinah in Hebrew, like Sakina in Arabic. This would have represented Muhammad's wife. The incense also symbolized God's glory, but since it needed cleansing in the rituals it could have represented the captive woman. The blood being put on the top could also represent beheading. The laughter will be linked to the Lord's name as before, and in the story an unseen voice called the woman by name. However, existing accounts of the Day of Atonement rituals do not mention the Lord's name being spoken at this point although we know that other Jewish groups have slightly different rituals. Saad, the one who had said that the Jews should be killed, had been wounded before the siege by an arrow in his arm. However, he now died and they wrapped him in three cloths. The angel Gabriel came to Muhammad to say that Saad was now in heaven. The doors of heaven have been opened and the divine throne shook for Saad. Seventy thousand angels came to meet him.
فلما جاءها نودي أن بورك من في النار ومن حولها وسبحان الله رب العالمين فلما جاءها نودي أن بورك من في النار ومن حولها وسبحان الله رب العالمين Saad was taken for burial, and Muhammad was one of the pallbearers. Saad was fat but we have never carried a lighter beer. The angels are helping. While digging his grave, a sweet aroma came out of the ground. Also, a man took some soil away from the grave but later it had turned into perfume. Saad has already been linked to the incense, and so having an arrow wound in the arm probably relates to the handle of the shovel used for the charcoal. The high priest now immersed himself in the bronze basin, which symbolized Saad's death. Gabriel arriving to inform Muhammad will be, as before, the high priest changing into his colorful garments. The high priest next performed some other rituals and then changed into his white garments again. It is these white garments which represent Saad being wrapped in three cloths. His white robe. His girdle. His turban. The high priest then went into the Holy of Holies to retrieve the incense shovel. We are told that 70,000 angels met Saad. These are the lampstands in the temple. There were five lampstands either side, with seven lamps each, making 70 lamps in total. That is why Moses chose 70 of his people for our place of meeting. The thousand is linked to the Holy of Holies as before. The doors of heaven opened for Saad. That the doors in the temple symbolized the gates of heaven can be seen from the saying, Hadith. A rider would take 40 or 70 years to ride from one gate of heaven to the other. The lampstands could signify either 40 or 70, as shown earlier. The divine throne shook for Saad, yet the divine light appearing before the Ark of the Covenant was described as smoke and thick clouds. Hail, the incense contained salt.
coals on fire. Lightning, sparks from the curls. Thunder, the sound of the shovel on the floor. The temple setting for lightning and thunder can be seen in the hem of the high priest's robe. By tradition, the golden bell signified thunder, and woven pomegranates lightning. Earthquakes, moving the shovel. The divine throne shaking is probably linked to such symbolism. Additionally, a real earthquake did occur when the prophet Isaiah was in the temple. The angels carrying the beer refers to the fact that priests were called angels, and his fatness relates to the incense. In the second temple he disposed of the incense in the outside altar, but it would be perfectly possible that in Solomon's temple he put the incense on the incense altar. This is why Sard's grave and soil were fragrant. The Arab tribe beheading the Jews did so with great satisfaction. However, the allied Arab tribe were sad upon seeing the Jews killed. La, la, la. Therefore Muhammad ordered each of the last twelve Jews to be killed by their allies, one to wound and the other to be head. One of the last twelve was an important Jewish merchant. The brother of one of the executioners came to protest. Did you help to kill the merchant? Yes, but much of the flesh on your belly comes from his wealth, you miserable wretch. If Muhammad had ordered me to kill you, I would have done so. If my own brother would kill me out of obedience then there is only one thing left to say. By God, this is indeed a religion. He then became a Muslim. The last twelve men refer to the twelve lampstands in the temple. The wounding and beheading refer to the removal of the high priest's garments. Wounding is the removal of the girdle.
Beheading is the removal of the turban. The high priest, after immersing again, then put on his colorful garments. The two brothers would symbolize the two shoulder stones, which in turn symbolized the cherubim. This is confirmed by the reference to the flesh on your belly, he wore a breastplate connected to the two shoulder stones. His unbelieving brother converting to Islam would then symbolize the final cleansing. When all the other captives had been allotted, Muhammad wanted one Jewish woman as booty. Will you leave Judaism and embrace Islam? No. If you embrace Islam then you can marry me. I loved my husband. After some time had passed, Muhammad heard footsteps. This person will tell me that she has accepted Islam. She has accepted Islam. I have accepted Islam and will now marry you. They were married and Muhammad put the veil on her. Note that the wives of Muhammad are shown already with face veils due to Islamic sensitivities. She then said that no one will see her after Muhammad. The high priest now attended to the lamps in the menorah lamp stand, which would have burned low. The lamps burning low signify her initial rejection of Muhammad. The bells on the hem signify the footsteps Muhammad heard. Their union was symbolized by the light shining on the high priest. The light symbolized the glory of Allah. This glory also appeared between the cherubim on the Ark of the Covenant. The Quran too states that the Sakina, Shekina glory, came with the Ark. So Muhammad putting the veil on his wife refers to the curtain veil which shielded the Holy of Holies where the Ark was kept. This is why she said that no one will see her after Muhammad, because only the high priest was allowed in the Holy of Holies.
This is in the area where a Jewish group called the Essenes lived in pre- and early Christian times. The Essenes were famed for their love, holiness, prophesizing the future, and miracles. Yet 70 years ago, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found here. The scrolls imply that the Essenes believed that there was a secret code in the scriptures, and there are established scholars who have recently been discovering a hidden code based on temple symbolism. If these events of Moses's life were temple stories, then to what extent are the Israelite battles, with their killing all the men and taking women as booty? From the evidence I have given, I hope you can see that this holy book with its related stories also should be interpreted in the light of temple symbolism, which therefore leaves only one thing left to say. وأنزل الذين ظاهروهم من أهل الكتاب من صياصيهم وقذف في قلوبهم الرعب فريقا تقتلون وتأسرون فريقا No people were harmed in the making of this story. Thank you for watching. If you are a Muslim, you will have been told that Muhammad was the most perfect human ever. If you are not a Muslim, you will probably have a rather different view of him, especially in the light of certain Islamic factions and their methods. This video has shown that one violent Islamic source actually links Muhammad to a divinely inspired group noted for their love of humanity.